G'day, it's Pete here, and I'm back for the day four report of the World Championship over in Wuhan, where we're going to look over at the Australian and New Zealand results. And then we're just over the halfway mark, so instead of looking at a good hand today, what I wanted to look at is look like where the teams are placed, what they've got left to go, that sort of stuff. Anyway, let's jump in and look at how they went yesterday. Okay, so uh, here in the open... Um, But before we do, let's just talk about which teams are on BBO. And there's only one Australian or New Zealand team on BBO today. And that is the Australian Open team. And they are on all day. The first match they are playing against USA 2 at 10 a.m. local time, which is 12 o'clock over in the eastern states of Australia and 2 p.m. Uh, in New Zealand. And then we've got England. Uh, so Australia Open versus uh, England at the 1.30 match and Australia Open versus USA 1 at the 4.30 match. So a really tough day for the Australian Open team. It'll be really interesting to see where they're actually placed after this. If they get through this with a healthy amount of VPs, then I think they're well placed. If they have a bad day, this, this is the make or break day in what I see. So hopefully they can get through uh, with a reasonable amount of VPs. Um, anyway, uh, let's uh, look through the results again. If you go to uh, like abf.com.au, check in for results, click results up here. The best way to see the running scores is uh, over here. Bermuda Bowl is the open team. Venice Cup is the women's. Uh, the the Aussie Trophy is the seniors. And then that's the mixed teams. Um, so that's the best way to see the results. We've just finished round 12. So if you did want to see any individual round, uh, you can check those out. We're now playing 13 through 15. So in the Open today, uh, quite a good day for the Open teams. So the Australian Open team beat Russia by 15 and Canada by 17th. So they're positioned in ninth place. Uh, so right on it. But re really, I want to see where they're placed after today because this is a huge day for the Australian Open team. Uh, New Zealand had a fantastic day today. Uh, they... Uh, the, they're keeping the dream alive. Their recovery process is well underway. Uh, they had a 40 imp win versus Bangladesh. They had a 98 imp win versus Morocco. And they also won the grudge match versus Australia by five imps. So they had three wins and they're climbing back up the ranks. So another interesting thing that happened in the match against Morocco is Morocco got a 7 VP fine. And that's because they rocked up 38 and a half minutes late. And there was only a cutoff of, you could potentially only play if you rocked up 40 minutes or under. So they were just in the nick of time to actually play. So they copped a 7 VP fine. And then lost the match by 98 imps. So they went negative 7. Um, so, <laughs> also the scoreline in that was 100 to 2. So New Zealand racked up the uh, ton in imps. So fantastic day there. Um, two big wins and a win against Australia. So keeping their hopes alive, climbing up the ranks there. Uh, in the women's, uh, New Zealand beat Trinidad and Tobago by 44. And they also knocked over England by nine imps. So that was quite good. And the Australian mixed team, uh, Australian women's team knocked over Hong Kong uh, by nine imps as well. So that was a good win for them. And yeah, uh, New Zealand is in 14th place, but notice that's only uh, not that many VPs off eighth. So it's really tight all the way down to uh, 15th there. So uh, even though New Zealand's in 14th place, they're very well placed and could jump up into that top eight reasonably easily. Uh, in the seniors, uh, it was a toughish day for the seniors. Uh, New Zealand came close. They had a very small loss to India, one of their best results so far. They've been struggling a bit. Um, but uh, Australia seniors broke a bit of a drought and beat Japan by 19. And they're in 13th place, uh, still within catching distance. Um, but a sizable difference, but they'll have to uh, play well. But still completely within the... Uh, range of uh, catching up that. 
And then the, uh, in the mixed, Australia had two wins today. They beat Egypt by 24, and they also beat Latvia by six. And Latvia were currently coming second, so that was a really good win uh, for Australia there. Um, so two good wins. And we're in 15th place. Um, similar position to, like, the seniors. Uh, we've got a bit of work to do, but still uh, in the fray there. It's still possible to uh, catch up there. Anyway, uh, let's look at uh, the cross tables. So if you want to uh, check out the cross tables, you can scroll down and look at cross table by rank and see which teams are doing well, which what's left to play. So here in the open, the Bermuda Bowl, um, Australia poised here. They have a relatively tough draw to come. So they'll have to really be on their game to stay where they are slash creep off one spot. But today is a big day. So um, after today, you'll have a, a much better idea of where they're actually placed there. Uh, New Zealand have now sort of played the most of the top teams and most of the bottom teams. and have a lot of the teams in the middle. So uh, they're pretty well poised, can obviously catch up a few more imps there. Um, but they've now uh, collected their big wins off all the bottom teams that they needed to do to try and bring themselves back into that. Uh, in the Venice Cup, uh, New Zealand are he poised here, and uh, they've played a lot of the good teams here, but the uh, number one and number two teams, they've still yet to play. So I reckon they'll be really interesting matches to see how they pull them off. If they get through them, then I think they've got quite solid chances of making the top eight. Um, Australia are a little bit too far out. Uh, they still mathematical, still can do it. I think they're probably just a touch out of the uh, range that I reckon can do it. Um, but this is a quite a inexperienced Australian team. Most of them haven't played uh, at the World Championship before. They're doing quite well. And for me, what I personally would be targeting is about uh, you know top twelve. If they can get into the top half, I think that would be fantastic. Obviously, I want to keep the dream alive and see if they can actually have a fantastic run home and get into the top eight. And then in the seniors, uh, so Australian seniors, they've got a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, they've played, uh, what, they've still got to play one and two, and most of the teams in the middle. Um, so they've got a bit of work cut out for them. They've played uh, three of the four bottom teams, but they've still got one. Uh, in there that they can hopefully get a good result out and if they play well they can uh, catch that up and then in the mixed uh, Australia here uh, we haven't played either of the bottom two teams um, and we have one and three to play so again it's a bit of uh, both ends of the spectrum and just scattered uh, uh, places there in the mix I'd really watch out for Sweden I was just looking at this and they've played nearly all of the top teams and have a really easy run home, I'd think. So I'd watch Sweden just uh, fly up the ranks most likely. So I'd keep my eye on them to see how well they uh, progress going forward. Uh, New Zealand's a little further back. Uh, I feel like that's too much to catch up to get into uh, the top eight. Again, still potentially possible and they have quite a good run home. They have played one, two, three, and four. So they should have a bit of an easier day uh, here. I think it's probably a little bit too much to actually catch up. Um, so again, for them, I'd be aiming for the top half, but still, you want to cross your fingers and see if they can actually uh, get all the way up into the top eight. Anyway, thanks all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.